This is as powerful as an i7 7700K. Remember when that came out, how ridiculously powerful it is? And now you can get that much power in something that's this small. This is a sponsor video by Geekom, and I've been saying no to most sponsor videos. I've been saying no to most hardware videos, but what they told me was, hey, we want you to take one of the Intel NUX that's similar in specs and just compare that and talk about it. You know, it's like, it's like the same exact thing all the way around, same parts. I checked the specs on the inside. I looked under the hood. It's basically the same thing, and you're spending a couple hundred more dollars to get the Intel equivalent. I mean, even the case is exactly pretty much the same. And you know what? It's got Intel on the inside, so Intel's getting their cut anyway. And that's why this video is going to be more of a PSA where I'm talking about what you're getting here when you get this as opposed to an Intel NUC. Now they're the same exact size, they have the same ports. And there's multiple different varieties of Intel NUC. Uh, this one is the NUC 11 Performance Mini PC Kit. And I'm putting that up against the Mini IT11 from Geekom. You can get a, a, a NUC 12, but the price is like so much higher than the Geekom that I don't think it's a fair comparison at all. This one's already a couple hundred dollars more than the one I'm looking at. And the CPU on this Intel is not as good. Let's cover a few of the specs first, and then we'll just talk about some differences between the two and look at some benchmarks. And then I'll talk about what I'm gonna be using this for. 11 centimeters by about 11 and a half centimeters by four and a half centimeters. Since Americans hate the metric system, here's a banana for scale. Wait a minute, that's a mutant banana. Why is it so ridiculously huge? All right, here's a, uh, a can for scale. Oh, wait a minute, that's a 16 ounce can. Sorry about that. Let me go get a 12 ounce can. There we go. Can for scale. Now, Americans can understand how big it is. Hopefully nobody mistakes my charm for smarm. Now we've got ports all over this thing. The newer Intels, the more expensive Intels do have USB 4, but this one does not. I feel like at this price range, USB 4 is out, may as well have it. But the Geekom has two USB 4 ports, one in the front, one in the back, and they also support 8K displays. And they're able to drive it thanks to the i7 1195G7. The stock clock is 2.9 on this one, the Intel's 2.8, but they both will boost up to five, or I'm sorry, 4.7, so close to five. Also on the front there, we've got our audio port, which is also a microphone. Um, then we have USB beside that. All the USB on this is 3.2, high speed stuff. We have Wi-Fi 6, and we also have Bluetooth 5.2. Then on the back here, that's another one of those USB 4. Then we have HDMI, some more USB, and then we have our Ethernet port and a display port right there. And then beside that's our power port. Then on the side, we have memory card reader. And on the other side, we have there our, our lock. Kensington lock. So really it's almost identical other than having a better CPU. The Intel that we're looking at has the uh, i7 1165G7 and that one's at 2.8, but it's very, very similar CPU, but it's, it's one step down. And you're again, you're paying a lot more for the Intel. Uh, they both have 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. So this is the price here for the Geekom. 16 gigabytes of DDR4 there, 512 gigabyte SSD. I checked it has a Lexar X SSD, which is an M.2 SSD. There's all the, all the specs. This has better specs than this. Let me zoom in. The Geekom has better specs than this Intel. Look at the prices. Now you can also get like, um, the new NUC 12, which is a little bit newer, has some newer features and such, but this one is a step down when it comes to the CPU. So even though it's newer, it may have some newer features, maybe you have USB 4 or something. I don't even think this one has USB 4. You gotta step up even higher to get USB 4, but even then, even with the newer NUCs, but it's still, this has better specs. So it's, it's gonna be really, really hard to recommend a NUC. And that's the main reason I wanted to make this video is if you're someone out there who's about to buy 50 of these for their business, or about to buy a bunch of these for your house or whatever, you, you just you need some NUCs. Well, maybe you consider getting a Geekom instead. You can get more Geekoms for your money. You get one for every single person in your office. You got 40 people there. Getting 40 of these and you're saving a couple hundred, two or three hundred dollars on each unit, that's gonna add up. More features, more speed. Speaking of speed, let's talk about that for just a minute because I did put these side by side and found out that they're almost identical in speed. So starting off with Geekbench, because I think a lot of people are gonna be using this for just general purpose office stuff, uh, but this will measure all kinds of different things. The single core performance for the Geekom is 1627 and multi core performance is 5071 versus the Intel, which is 1548 and 5052. So the Geekom is slightly faster there, but that makes sense because it's a slightly faster CPU. And then we can see in the OpenCL performance, the Intel has a little bit of an edge there. And also in Cinebench, the Intel has 
the edge is so small that it's it's basically um, margin of error, but the Intel's OpenCL speed is pretty good. Uh, the last thing I wanted to check out was superposition, and you can see the Geekom uh, achieving a score of 2349 versus Intel's 2262. Again, extremely close, like a little bit too close for the money in my opinion. The Intel should be substantially faster if dollars bought performance, if you know what I mean. All right, so I thought there was going to be more to this video than that, but that's pretty much it. Like the purpose of this video was to tell you not to get the Intel nut, but to get the Geekom instead and save yourself a bunch of money. That's literally what this video is about. That's what my findings have been. But what are we going to do with it? Let's talk a little bit more. So I've been playing a lot of emulators on this because I like to be able to hook it up in my living room. It's a tiny little device you can use it for all of your media slinging if you want to use jellyfin or plex or something you can have that installed and then stream all of your media with this it's not going to slow down it's not going to stutter with 4k files it does have the integrated intel iris which is not good enough for modern AAA games at crazy resolutions you might be able to get away with 720p or 1080p on medium or low settings but i would not play modern AAA games on this it's just not a gaming computer because it's got the intel iris graphics on the in inside which are okay now for older games indie games and emulators it is amazing uh, i played quite a quite a bit on this uh, a lot of playstation games it runs those buttery smooth so you don't have to worry at all and the other thing that's nice about this is if you want to run retroarch and play some of the old games with CRT filters. Those do tax the CPU a little bit, but this has enough overhead to be able to apply some, even, even some heavy filters, like the Sonic the Hedgehog here you're seeing on the screen. I have a very fancy CRT filter with the bezels and everything. This is a 48 layer filter. It's ridiculous. If you, if you don't know what that means, just it just means that it's processing 48 layers of filtering on top of this image to give you the CRT effect. And it's able to do that with no slowdown whatsoever. So you can pretty much play any old games, any emulators and run all the filters that you like on this device and you'll be totally fine. Otherwise, it's got 16 gigabytes of RAM. So as long as you're doing basic Photoshop editing and not doing, you know, like 9,000 megapixel files or stuff with 200 layers, you'll be just fine. This would be okay for a lot of ad agencies if you want to run Publisher or InDesign or a lot of the Adobe pro products. Uh, even Premiere will work just fine on this. As long as you're not doing multiple 4K layers and, and not doing too many effects, you'll be just fine. When I first got started in this, the i7-7700K was a, a, you know, a CPU that we used a lot for video editing and it ran just fine and this is about as fast as an i7 7700k and i think that's a good way for a lot of us to know how fast it really is the other thing that's nice about the size is that if you wanted to go somewhere and have an actual computer throwing this small monitor a keyboard and a mouse into a bag is doable you could take this with you and have an actual little computer that you could use laptop yeah that's fine too but you know, this might be a little less expensive than a laptop and you're gonna get a lot of performance out of it. So if you wanted to take this on the go with you, you totally could. But I think most people are going to mount this to the back of their screens, which reminds me there are some things in the box I wanna show you and then we'll be done. All right, so both this and the Intel have mounting brackets where you can mount them behind uh, your monitor, like a Visa mounting bracket. But this one also comes with a nice little bag, like I was mentioning to carry this around with you. So this came with a bag, the Intel didn't come with a bag, which is, well, whatever, you know, it's cool. Our Visa mountable bracket. So you can mount this to the back of your monitor, or if you wanted to, you can mount it to your wall or whatever. You can mount this up however you like. This one also came with an HDMI cable. I didn't ask for it, but it's nice to have. So HDMI cable inside and also the AC adapter. So the moral of the story is, if you're about to buy an Intel NUC or mini Intel NUCs, do not get a Geekom instead. You can get a whole bunch of these, save a bunch of money. And if you're like a buying person at your company, well, you'll get a, a big bonus for all the money you save them, right? So that's the video. Thanks very much to Geekom for sponsoring. Let me know what you think of this. Is it cool that there are uh, multiple different devices out there that are similar to the NUC, but way less expensive? The answer is yes, of course. All right, I'll see you in the comments, everybody. Let me know what you think. Bye.